Hey guys, as landscape photographers, there are a number of amazing natural phenomena that we go chasing for. One of the most famous of those is, of course, the aurora, the beautiful uh, colors in the sky caused by the magnetic uh, sphere that circles the Earth. Up until fairly recently, another one of those famous natural phenomena that few people had photographed was bioluminescent algae. And the reason people hadn't been photographing the bioluminescent algae very much was because there simply wasn't very much information about it, about how to find it, where it was, where it occurred, what times it occurred, all that kind of stuff. There wasn't much information about it. But of course, then social media came along and the groups on sites like Facebook and people corralled their information and gave up the secrets and bioluminescent uh, algae became quite a popular thing to photograph. I was lucky enough to photograph bioluminescent oceans down here in South Coast, New South Wales for the first time about eight years ago. I got a tip off from a local photographer who's a friend of mine and she said, holy cow, you've got to come down to Jervis Bay. There's been this beautiful algal bloom. The oceans are glowing. You've got to come and see it. And so it was uh, quite late at night on a Friday night and I hopped in the car and drove us about a 35 minute drive down to me to Jervis Bay from here in Bury, and I could not believe what I saw when I got there. Now I was born and raised in suburbia in England and let me tell you most things that I see within the Australian landscape are amazing to me. I love the landscape, uh, I love the flora and the fauna but this was something else. The algae was bioluminescing in the oceans and as the waves rippled onto the shore. There wasn't a big swell, there never is really in Jervis Bay. It was agitating the algae and causing them to glow. It really was quite an incredible sight and I had no idea how to photograph it. That was the first problem. Since that day, eight years ago, I've been lucky enough to photograph the bioluminescent oceans down here about uh, four times since then. As the popularity of this particular natural phenomenon has exploded recently, it is highly likely that you're going to get lots of people down on the beach. The first few times I did it, I was lucky enough to just have the entire place to myself with just another couple of people. But these days, the secret's well and truly out. So here are some tips from me about uh, photographing bioluminescent algae. So obviously, the first thing you need to know is where it's going to appear. And in my experience, it does tend to appear in certain places on a regular basis. Now, there are no hard and fast rules about where an algal bloom will appear, but it does seem to be that some locations, some beaches, some bits of coastline get it much more often than others. Whether that's because they're just being checked more regularly these days, I don't know but there are certain places down in Tasmania, on the coastline of Victoria, and here on the east coast of Australia, where you tend to get it more often. Here in the south coast, the number one location by a mile, and the place where I've always photographed it, is inside Jervis Bay, and it can appear on any of the beaches on the western inside edge of the bay and the southern side of the bay. Uh, I haven't really heard too many reports of it appearing on the northern side of the bay, and I think that's purely down to the way that the currents, the ocean currents, and the prevailing wind works. The wind tends to come from the north and blows south, and it just moves the algae down onto those southern portions of the bay. And I think the same is probably true of a lot of other locations, that you need to look at the way the prevailing wind patterns work and the way the currents in the ocean work. And there just seems to be this fetch along those southern beaches and southern coastline inside the bay of Jervis Bay that attracts and collects this bioluminescent algae. As to other locations around the country and indeed around the world, you'll have to consult your local uh, bioluminescent Facebook groups. So let's say you've gone out to investigate and you've discovered some bioluminescent algal blooms on your beach. How do you photograph it? 
obviously you're going to be shooting at night time because that's when this stuff shows up. So the first thing you need is without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to need a tripod to take your photos because you're going to be doing long exposure shots. Modern cameras, of course, handle the high ISO settings a lot better these days. And if you have a relatively modern camera, you can get away with quite high ISO settings and not have massive amounts of noise. Unfortunately, when I first started shooting the bioluminescent algae, I had a, a Canon 550D, which I had to set the ISO to 3200, and it looked like an impressionistic painting. It was so pixelated due to the noise levels, and there was nothing really I could do with that. Later on, I got a 7D2 with much better uh, low noise levels at the uh, higher ISO settings, and I've now got a Fujifilm X-T4, and I can't wait until I get to shoot them again because the noise on the high ISO levels on this camera is amazing. So yes, you're gonna want a tripod because you're gonna be shooting multiple second exposures. Anywhere between sort of five seconds and 30 works really well. If you want to capture one wave, you're looking for a period of about three to five seconds as it's coming in, or you can go for that nice kind of pool of blue effect by doing much longer sort of 30 second exposures, that sort of thing. Because you're probably going to be photographing this on sand, maybe you get a bit of rock and you get lucky, but you're probably going to be shooting on sand. You want to put the camera on a timer, a two second timer, so that when you trigger the exposure, the camera doesn't move right at the start and blur your photograph. Your camera will probably have a hard time autofocusing due to the very low light levels. And you've got a couple of options here. You can either focus manually, uh, zoom in and just use your eye to try and get as focused as possible. Or you can do what a lot of us do, which is just shine a torch uh, on the ground in front of where you're photographing, let the camera focus on that and then flick it to manual uh, focus so it doesn't change focus before you take your photograph. You don't really want any extra glass on the front of your camera because you want to get as much light coming through the glass onto the sensor as possible. So ND filters, circular polarizers, anything like that, take it off the lens. Remember to try and mix up your shots, of course. A lot of people are so amazed when they, when they see the bioluminescent algae that they sort of plant themselves in one spot and just take the same photograph over and over again. Remember to mix things up. Try it from different heights. Try it from eye level. Try putting the camera down nice and low. Try and also photograph the immediate bit of beach in front of the thing. One of the things you can do, which is really cool, is start a multi-second exposure and then walk through your shot because when you walk on sand that has the bioluminescent algae in it, it makes bio footprints. It's so cool. It looks like ghost footprints padding off into the distance. Now, the only other thing I would say is to please be mindful of everyone around you. Uh, down here in Jervis Bay, the bioluminescent blooms when they happen and when they get publicized are extremely popular. And I don't blame anyone for wanting to come and see it. But we photographers are quite an anal bunch <laughs> and we like photographing this stuff and people running around with torches completely ruin shots, of course, because you get these lights going through the scene because we're shooting long exposures uh, and mucking up a photo they might have spent ages framing, getting ready, pressing the timer and waiting and then somebody runs through with a torch. It can be very annoying. As long as we're all mindful of each other and just remember that we're not all there for the same reasons. Some people are just there to experience it and there might be little kids who are of course absolutely thrilled and I think it's a beautiful, amazing thing that they can go down and see the bioluminescence uh, and the photographers there are of course photographing it. Let's all try and get along as best we can and cut each other some slack when we're photographing it. And if you do go down to Jervis Bay or any of the beaches on the uh, coastline of Australia, I would of course love to see your shots. Thanks very much guys, till next time, bye bye.